G'day and welcome back to Australia's best classic mini YouTube channel, Tomo's Tune Ups. On this episode, I'm gonna tell you my top five tips to check on a regular basis when you own a classic mini. All right, so if you're new to the channel, welcome and g'day. If you haven't already hit the subscribe and like button, don't forget to hit it down below and check out some of my other videos posted above. Now, we're gonna go through my top five things to check when you own a classic Mini. So, first thing we're gonna be checking on a regular basis is the engine oil level. I cannot stress this enough, as low engine oil can result in low oil pressure and therefore do internal damage to not only the engine, but also the gearbox. This is a common mistake that a lot of people fail to check on a regular basis, especially when you own a classic Mini. Anyone out there who owns one knows how much these things leak. They don't pour out oil, but they do drip quite a lot. It is important to check it on a regular basis. Also, while you're there, check to see if it's due for a service. General rule of thumb that we use at Penrith City Tiles Automotive is six months or 10,000 Ks, whichever occurs first. Now, what that means is if you don't do a lot of kilometers every year, you do it by time. If you do a lot of kilometers, you're gonna do it by distance. So it's one or the other, you can't have both. To change your oil on a classic mini is quite simple. If you haven't already, check it out in the video above. Now number two is tires and tire pressures. Tire pressures is one of the most overlooked things of the most modern day cars. They are something that we check on a regular basis and quite often they're underinflated. Occasionally you get some that are overinflated. So you wanna find that happy medium as to where the car needs to be. From memory, the classic mini runs about 24 PSI. I think from memory, someone can comment in the section below and let me know if I'm wrong. That is pretty low in comparison to today's standards. For instance, my N70 Hilux, I run it at 40 PSI. The average common tire pressure that you would wanna run is between 38 and 40, depending on the load and the driving styles that you're doing. If you have some extra load in there, you probably wanna run it up a little bit higher, but not too high. When you drive the car every single day, you learn how the car performs and what it does. If it feels too stiff, either you've got a suspension issue or your tire pressures are too high. If it feels like a bit of a boat, you've also probably got suspension issues, but also the easiest thing to check to begin with is tire pressures. It is important to make sure that you run the correct and optimum tire pressure to ensure maximum tire life from the tires. You wanna be checking the tire to make sure it's not cracked or damaged in any way. And if it is, get it inspected by a professional. Things like cracks in the sidewall or even on the tread can show that the vehicle has had the tires on there for too long and need to be replaced. In Australia, you can run a tire for up to 10 years. If the tire is over 10 years old, you are very likely to run into issues with not only braking and drivability, but also in the wet. So just like a pair of shoes, they're gonna wear out over time. A lot of people say that, oh, my car's still got the spare tire from the 70s. It's never been changed, it's brand new. I'm sure it is brand new, but that thing would be buggered. You put that on your car, you're gonna crash. I can guarantee it. Maybe not straight away, but it is going rock hard and it is not gonna be safe for the vehicle. So check on the side of the tire, not only the manufacturing date, but also what pressure you should be running in it. Adjust the tire pressures to suit your driving style and make sure that the tires aren't wearing unevenly. Things like tire pressures and also wheel alignments done every six months can maximize the tire life of your vehicle. While we're there, don't forget also to check the spare tire. It is something a lot of people forget about and when you go to use it, you're broken down the side of the road, you've got a flat, you replace it with a tire that is also flat and then you're stuck in a pickle. Then at the end of the day, you run a flat tire, it destroys it, you need to replace the one that just came off the car, that's now two tires you've just buggered because you haven't checked the spare on a regular basis. Checking a spare tire is a very simple thing to do and you should get into the habit of doing it every couple of weeks, if not on a regular basis once a month. Step number three is to check the condition of the wiper blades. Wiper blades are generally made of rubber and over time, as we know, just like a pair of shoes, they wear out over time. It is something quite simply over overlooked and you forget all about it until it starts to rain, you hit the wipers and it smears, judders, bounces up and down and just doesn't clean the screen very well. This is a really easily overlooked thing that we get quite often and for the fact of 40 to $100, depending on the wiper style, you can get them replaced. You can either do it yourself or get a professional to do it. All you need to do is lift up the wiper blade and inspect it for cracks. If it looks like it's frayed, it's coming apart, it's missing, it's not even there, 
likely need to be changing it. But also put a bit of water on the windscreen, whether it be through the washer jets or even just washing your car, hit the wipers. If it judders all over the screen and leaves marks and streaks, you might as well replace it. All right, so number four is to check the fluid levels on a regular basis. You wanna be checking the radiator, you wanna be checking the engine oil, and you wanna be checking the washer bottle fluid. If it has power steering, make sure you check that. If you're running a supercharger that has a oil feed at the top and you have a little reservoir, make sure you check that as well. Any fluid level in the car that you have, make sure you check it on a regular basis. Really good tip here is that if you run out of coolant in the radiator and you only have water in the washer bottle reservoir, pull off the jet and angle the pipe directly to the radiator and hit the washer jet. That way it directs the water directly into the radiator and you can top it up. This is a really good method that I've done in the past to help people out on the side of the road because I haven't had any water on them. While we're there, also inspect the glycol level. So the glycol is what makes coolant coolant. It's what raises the boiling point and lowers the freezing point. If it looks more like water and it doesn't look so much like coolant, chances are you probably need to flush it. Topping up with water is completely fine, but if you're doing it all the time, you're best off topping it up with coolant and rectifying the leak wherever it is, whether it be internally or externally from the engine. Don't forget to also check the condition and level of the brake and clutch fluid. If it looks nice and clean, chances are it's all right. If it's not, then you can get a tool to check the moisture level of the brake fluid. If you're ever unsure, you might as well change it. And last but not least, number five, it is checking seatbelts. Seatbelts are probably one of the easiest and most overlooked things that we forget about, not only as mechanics, but also as just drivers. You put your seatbelt on, it's all good, it gets a little loose, you have to retension it and pull it, it doesn't retract properly, it starts to fray, you think, oh, she'll be right. Seatbelts hold the most weight it is crazy. I've pulled engines out using seat belts, and I mean big block V8s, and those things hold tremendous amount of weight. Those things are what save your life, so always make sure you wear your seat belt. I cannot stress that enough. Part of the rego check system here is, every 12 months we get a pink slip. So it's a safety inspection of the vehicle to make sure that it's roadworthy. So anything safety related, we need to check on a regular basis every 12 months. Things like seatbelts not retracting or even frayed will fail a rego inspection. To buy a new seatbelt, it can range anywhere from $100 to up to $1,000, depending what it's made out of, where it's made, and what's involved in it. Does it have an airbag pretensioner, or is it just a standard retractable one? All you need to do is pull the seatbelt out, clip it in the buckle, give it what we call the tug test. Pull it a couple of times, make sure it locks in. Make sure as well that the buckle clips in. If it doesn't, replace one or the other components. It's very unlikely that the seatbelt itself will become damaged and won't clip into the buckle. Generally, kids put coins down in the buckle and then that's what causes it to not work. Make sure that it clips in. Once it clips in, disconnect it and then let it retract. If it doesn't retract, it's either a non-retractable seatbelt, like a lap belt for instance, like they used to have back in the 60s, or the ratcheting mechanism side there is starting to get a little bit stuck. You can spray some lubricant on there to try and help free it up, and this can be a good temporary fix to get it past rego, but ultimately you do want to be replacing it if it doesn't retract properly. If there's any fray of the webbing, you definitely want to change that, because over time, the more it frays, the weaker it becomes, and that thing is what's going to save your life. Don't just check the driver's seatbelt, but also check all the other ones inside the car. So you want to be checking the passenger side and as well as the ones at the back. Do the exact same test again, inspect them closely and make sure that they're not worn. I don't know about a lot of you, but I barely carry anyone else in this car other than myself or my son as he comes in the driveway with me. So it's not something that I need to check on a regular basis, but it is always in the forefront of my mind to make sure that all the safety items on my vehicle are safe, not just for me, but also others that get in my car. So that's it guys. Those are my top five things to check on a regular basis when you own a classic mini. As always guys, stay COVID safe, Thanks everyone for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed already, please hit the notification bell below so you let you know every time I release a new episode. At the moment, I'm doing one a week, every Thursday, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, 10 a.m. So until next time, guys, we'll see you right here on another episode of Tomo's Tune-Ups.